Hi, I'm Tony Mesa with uh, TonyMesaRealEstateSchool.com. Uh, the problem we're going to go through now is a problem that uh, math problem that sometimes you see on the state exam, and it has to do with you understanding how loans work. So they tell you that you have a hundred and fifteen thousand dollar loan at a six and a half percent interest rate with a monthly payment of six hundred and fifty dollars, and they're asking you to calculate the balance at the end of month two. All right, now the first thing is understand if I were to tell you in real life, um, you know, you have a loan of one hundred fifteen thousand. The interest rate is this particular interest rate. It's for this many years. What you would do is you would plug it into uh, either an amortization um, app on your phone, or you would plug it into a website, or you could have a financial calculator uh, like I have and calculate what the monthly payment is. But the formula to calculate the monthly payment is an extremely long formula. They will not give you in the state exam. On the state exam, they will give you a monthly payment. So that would be a fact that is given, right? They will give you a loan amount, they will give you an interest rate, they will give you a monthly payment, and then they will ask you to calculate the balance at the end of month two. All right, now first conceptually, what are the things that they want you to understand here? When you have a fixed rate loan, here the interest rate is six and a half percent, this is not an adjustable rate mortgage, this is a fixed rate loan, that means the monthly payment is always gonna be the same. So month one, you're gonna pay $650, month two, you're gonna pay $650, month three, you're gonna pay $650. You're gonna pay the same $650 each and every month when it's a fixed rate loan. It's not an adjustable rate mortgage where the interest rate adjusts and then the monthly payment changes. Here is what happens though on the fully amortized, which means at the end you'll owe zero, fixed rate loans, um, let's make up that this is a 30 year loan. I don't give you that as a fact, but let's just assume that. Uh, the monthly payment stays the same, but at the beginning you're paying almost all interest. And at the beginning you're paying very little principal, right? Now, what is it that happens? Conceptually, you have to understand that interest is like the rent you're paying for the money. When you pay a million dollars in interest, you have not reduced your loan by a single penny. Principal is what amortizes the loan or kills the loan, reduces what you owe. When you pay one dollar in principal, you reduce your loan by one dollar, right? And in a given month, the payment is made up of only two things, principal and interest, right? So the idea is every month in this uh, series of payments, if you were to add up in a given month how much is the principal, how much is the interest, they would in this example equal $650 because there are only two things in a payment, the principal and the interest, right? All right, so that uh, is a little bit of background there, right? Now let's take a look at how we solve this problem. There is, there are two memory aids that I'm going to give you so if you get this problem in the state exam. The first one is the PIP sandwich. The PIP sandwich is called the pip sandwich because you've got a piece of bread a piece of bread and you've got pip in between the two pieces of bread right so pip sandwich right bread bread pip in between what you do is you draw a box like this and you're going to draw five rows across right and then i'm going to give a little bit of space here to fill in what each one of these means and i'm going to make two columns i'm going to make a column for a month one, I'm going to make a column for month two, right? So what does the first B in the PIP sandwich stands for? It stands for the balance at the beginning of the month. And the B at the end is the balance at the end of the month. So this is the balance in that given month before you've made a payment. This is the balance at the end of the month after you've made a payment. This P stands for the payment. So the payment, the I interest, and the next P, the principal. So balance at the beginning, payment, interest, principal, balance at the end, right? All right, now, before I do a single calculation um, on the state exam, first I have to be clear what they are asking me for in the problem, right? What is the balance at the end of month two? Month one, month two, balance at the end, month two. I am going to circle this because that's the number I'm looking for. On the state exam, they may give you this, this, and this is an incorrect answer choice. You don't want to do the math right and look for the wrong thing, think you got the right problem, and then you just pick the wrong thing because you weren't paying attention to the question, right? Okay, the, the idea here is the monthly payment is 650. In month one, I'm gonna pay 650. In month two, I'm gonna pay 650. In month three, I'm gonna pay 650. This is a fixed rate loan. With a fixed rate loan, the monthly payment always stays the same. What is it that changes? the interest and principal components. At the beginning, it's almost all interest. It comes down a little bit every month. At the beginning, it's very little principal. Every month, it goes up a little bit, right? But the payment stays the same. 
Also, they have told me it's a $115,000 loan. So that's going to be my balance at the beginning of month one before I've made any payments, right? So the idea is that's the loan balance at the beginning of the loan. All right, now the next memory aid is Irv the banker. I is equal to R times V. Irv. So the memory aid is Irv. Irv, right? Irv the banker, right? Now, what do these letters stand for? The I in Irv the banker is the interest, but it's going to be yearly, yearly or annual interest, right? The R is the interest rate, the rate. Um, you need to have it as a decimal number to do the calculation. And the V is the value of the loan, okay? So here, the idea is um, I have an interest rate of 6.5%. I need to change 6.5% to a decimal number. I'm going to do it down here. Um, so first thing is I have to take care of the fraction. When I have a fraction, how do I change that to a decimal number? Top number, 1, divided by the bottom number, 2, gives me 0.5 in my calculator. So whenever you have a fraction, you want to change it to a decimal number, you take the top number and divide it by the bottom number, right? Now then I take, it's 6.5%. I take the 6 and I add it to the 0.5 that I just converted to a decimal number, and that gives me 6.5. Now, 6.5% and 6.5% mean the same thing. I still now have to change that to a decimal number, so I take that 6.5 and I divide it by 100. Then I get 0 0.065. So 0 0.065, this is how I write 6.5% as a decimal number. Again, you always need to use a decimal number to do the math. What have I done there? First, I deal with the fraction, top number divided by the bottom number, numerator divided by the denominator. Uh, and then I add together the whole thing, and then I divide the whole thing by 100, right? And that gives me the decimal number. Okay, in month one, my loan value is 115000 because I have not made any payments yet in month one. So that's the value of the loan, and I multiply that by 0 0.065. So if I take 115000 times 0 0.065, I wind up with the number 7000 475. Obviously, that's not the monthly interest. That doesn't make any sense. That is yearly, yearly interest. When you use the banker, the I is yearly interest. So I divide that number by 12. When I divide that number by 12, I wind up getting 622.91666. Now, normally I tell students, just don't worry about rounding off at all until the very end and see if they round it off. Um, here I'm going to round off before I put it in the box because we are dealing with money. So I'm going to round off to the penny. So what happens is over here, right, the tenths of a penny, there's a six. If at the tenths of the penny right here, I had a zero, one, a two, a three, or a four, I would leave the penny the way it is. If it's a five, a six, a seven, eight, or a nine, I would add a one to this. So I'm going to make that 622 and 92 cents, right? So the interest in month one is $622.92. All right, now, conceptually, what is it that happens? Conceptually, um, the idea is that you have uh, the payment, and the payment has two things in it, principal and interest. So if I take the payment, 650, and I subtract the interest component, I am left with the principal component. So the idea here is, that the payments, whatever it is, minus the interest component, which we just calculated, leaves you with the principal component. So here, 650 is the payment minus the interest of 622.92. So if I take 650 minus 622.92, then I am left with $27.08. So in month one, I paid $27.08 sense in principle. All right, now, conceptually, what's the next thing you have to understand? Uh, I'm just going to erase the problem over here so I have more space to write and not erase the calculations. Conceptually, the next thing that you need to understand is that when you pay interest, you don't reduce what you owe at all. 
Well, when do you reduce what you owe? When you pay principal. It is principal that amortizes or kills the debt, right? So what happens here is I have my balance at the beginning of the month, balance at the beginning of the month, minus the payment of principal equals the balance at the end of the month. So at the beginning of the month, I owed 115000 minus I paid in principal $27.08. So 115000 minus $27.08 leaves me with $114,972.92. That is the balance at the end of month one, $114,000. 972 and 92 cents. And look, you have to, you might get a math problem on this or you might get conceptual questions on this. So what concepts are you learning here? You're learning here uh, the idea that the payment minus uh, the principal component will give you the interest or minus the interest will give you the principal because there are two things in the payment, the principal and the interest. So you, so here when you're doing the math, you're taking the full payment, you're subtracting the interest, you're left with the principal. But you're also learning the, ca the concept that is the payment of principal that amortizes or kills the loan, reduces what you owe, not the payment of interest, right? All right, now the balance at the end of month one is the same thing as the balance at the beginning of month two. I'm going to transfer this number up here. Um, so now I go to month two, okay? Now in month two, um, let me do month two in blue so you guys could distinguish it better at home. Um, what happens is, I'm also gonna use Irv the banker, and the interest rate is still 0 0.065, but this is no longer a $115,000 loan. If you wanted to pay off this loan, you would now have to pay $114,972.92. So you have to use the current loan value for the next month. So. What happens here, if I take $114,972.92 and I multiply that by 0 0.065, the interest rate is a decimal number, then I wind up with this number, 7,473.2398. I don't round off because I'm not putting it in the box yet. Divided by 12 months in the year, that's yearly interest, I divide it by 12. When I divide that by 12, I get 622.76998. Again, same thing. I'm going to round off now because I'm putting it in one of the boxes. The tenths of a penny is a nine. So I'm going to add a one to this side. I'm going to make this $622.77. I'll just write this over here. $622.77. Why did it go from 76 to 77? Because the tenths of a penny, if it's a five or higher, five, six, seven, eight, or nine, you would add a one, right? All right, now, now in month two, I paid the same 650, because with a fixed rate loan, you always pay the same amount each month, minus the interest I paid of 622.77. So if I take $650 minus $622, and 77 cents, I'm left with $27.23. So the idea is the payment minus the interest gives me the principal of $27.23. Now, last step is I'm going to calculate the balance at the end of month two. So the idea is I started month two owing $114,972.92 minus in month two I paid $27 and 23 cents in principal. So 114,972 and 92 cents minus $27 and 23 cents winds up giving me uh, 114,945 and 69 cents. So the balance at the end of month two is 114,945 and 69 cents, and that will be the correct answer. Uh, notice there that from month one to month two, uh, my, my interest component went down by a little bit. Every month you pay a little bit less in interest. It's mostly interest, the payment is mostly interest, the beginning you're paying a lot of interest, but every month it comes down a little bit. 
And notice that the principal went from 2708 to 2703. It went up a little bit. If you don't see that happening, you know you made a mistake. Because what happens? At the beginning, it's mostly interest. Every month, it comes down a little bit. At the beginning, it's very little principal. Every month, it comes up a little bit. Remember to circle what you're looking for. Don't do all the math right. And then pick the wrong answer. Because on the state exam, that might be answer choice A, that might be answer choice B, that might be answer choice C, this might be answer choice D. Always carefully identify what you're looking for in a math problem. Everybody have a great day. Bye-bye.